Yeah. Hey, a little fun fact uh, that a lot of people don't know about me is I hate fish sticks. That's a horrible thing to say, sir. I caught a whole bunch of fish sticks over there. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> God, yeah, that was good. I caught a tree pounder the other day. <laughs> Jeez. No, you, I don't know if it's a Far Side cartoon or something with a little kid. He's going out uh, with his uh, fishing pole. Uh-huh. You know, he says, "Man, I hope I catch some." Fish sticks today. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, uh, no, yeah, fish sticks, like the ones that you eat. Like, I don't like those. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I just never have. Well, they're not great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that explain it. <laughs> they're edible, but they're not great. Yeah. I got some those new ones that they're not fish sticks. They're just like pieces but they're beer battered uh-huh. those are That's actually pretty one. good have you tried those I, I, I do like those I, I, I eat those I put like uh, lemon on them mm-hmm. just put them in there and squeeze lemon on them yeah those are pretty good I don't I, mind those at all I would if okay it, let me say that if I made my own fish sticks then I'd probably be like okay mm-hmm. is there a difference between fish sticks and like fish and chips I guess not I like fish and chips yeah, because it's like cod. But it, and what's fish sticks? What's that? What, what's that? What's fish in there? Fish sticks probably like they're probably all cod. It's just processed and bigger pieces or yeah, better pieces. the better parts. I don't right. know. Yeah, huh. uh, fish sticks is like the whole cod, including the guts. And then and then fish and chips is like the actual good stuff. The fish sticks Jeez. are the lips and assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when he says fuck him and feed him fish sticks, and no, he really doesn't lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Little feed those some fish sticks over there. Jesus. <laughs> well, I want to welcome all the listeners to uh, the Hibbley Green Show here and uh, here at the Bear Cave. And I'm with uh, my Hibbley homeboys here in the Bear Cave. We got uh, Cello Delgado. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Jason Adams. Hello. And Dwayne Beatty. What's up? And I'm your host, Maverick. We kind of got on a fun uh, tangent here with the... Uh, Fish sticks. I mean, <laughs> what, what's with the fish sticks? I just had to bring it up. Fun little fact about me: I hate fish sticks. You hate fish sticks. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Jeez. I've got something that's been that's been a, kind of like a topic lately in the social media is um, boat etiquette, mm-hmm. and and how it relates to not only just at the ramp but on the water and kayak versus you know boats and primarily bass boats. My my. my fear of uh, uh, wake boats. Those guys just scare the heck out of me. As soon as I see them hit the water, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I, I got to go, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what do you guys, how, how do you guys feel about, like, do you guys kind of like dodge them or do y'all like, I know, Jason, you don't really engage them that much. <laughs> you saw the experience that you and I had. We had a, yeah, that was a great experience. You think it was a great experience? It was for me. I mean, oh, I, I almost I was got like, his fight. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he is going off. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's elaborate more on this. I'm sure that what the accident or the incident? The, let's talk because I want to talk about the accident too. But let's talk about the incident. What what did it look like? Okay, so we're we're at one of our local honey holes. Yeah, and we're, we're not, fi- not going to say we're not name dropping. Nope, not at all. We don't, we don't name Sorry, drop guys. on the show. Creek X. Yeah, there we go. So we're. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're at Creek X and uh, we're fishing a spot and we're, you know, having a good time fishing and trying to catch some fish for our mm-hmm. tournaments and stuff like that. And um, we're, we're probably about 20 yards from the bank. So there's not a lot of space between where we're fishing and the bank, right? And this bass boat comes up and it's got three guys in it. They don't say, it was what, six or seven in the morning? It was yeah, pretty they, early. They were the next folks at the at the ramp. I mean, but it, what time us. was? Yeah, we but it was early. Like three. They got there at, right at daylight. Right. We were there at three o'clock. o'clock in the morning. Right. So we've been there for a while. And this boat comes up and they don't say good morning. They don't say, hey, m- do you mind if we squeeze in here? Hey, nothing. They didn't even say hello. And they just rolled up between us and the bank. God. Pretty much put their the bow of their boat right in our, our the right spot where we were, right where right we were, were casting. casting. Oh right. man! What's bad is the the trolling motor and and all their noise. You know, we we spent 
two hours to even get close to the spot mm-hmm. because we knew that we would mess the fish up. They come rolling up in there in the spot and just <laughs> really mess the spot I, up, you know, for I, all I, of us. Yeah, I ended up pulling a Maverick, and people who aren't listeners, you know me, know what that means. And it's uh, I kind of lost it and blew a gasket, and <laughs> we kind of got into a verbal confrontation with them. And then finally I just said, screw it. So I grabbed one of those... Um, um, you know how you do those trick shots? What is that? Like a, a practice jig with yeah. no hook in it? Yeah, just a practice right. jig cut off. So I'll let that thing go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right into the side of the boat. Right into the side. You heard this clank right in the side of the boat. And they both, and then the guys, there's three of them, mm-hmm. right? And they're they're talking tough and whatever. And I'm like, the bank is right there. Mm-hmm. Let's go walk over to the bank and talk. You know, so I guess you could probably they tell were, it better. They, were, they they weren't that tough. After after you laid into them, no, they weren't tough. Mm-hmm. I mean, you called out the one in the middle that wasn't even driving the trolling motor, told him you're going to whoop his ass. That's <laughs> <laughs> so hilarious. He had, he had a maverick moment. <laughs> I tell him, I'm like, maybe I can hit the guy in the blue shirt. I think I can get him. But those guys did move. They they knew they didn't want any part of this. Yeah. You know. And oh was yeah, I was really. I, I just you know? I'm like, and it wasn't it wasn't the fact. What I was yelling at them is not like, hey, you're in, you're you're in my. I mean, I'm going to end up landing in your boat. Mm. What bothered me was the fact that they didn't even say good morning. They didn't say hello. They didn't say, would you mind? If they would have even said something like that, then maybe I would have said, you know, mm-hmm. something. Um, Nor did they even sneak up to the spot. They came in. Oh, they came on in board. Th- on, you know, full full, full speed, and, and then plane. they just let it go. And, and they let it down right, right into our spot. Right. I mean, it just happened like that. You yeah. Know? And they came they didn't out of time to say good morning because they knew that no. they were. They knew what they were going to do before they even got there. Right. That sucks. I hate that. So, my, how do you guys deal with etiquette, Dwayne? What do you? I mean, uh, either on the launch or on the water. The launch is a little different, but on the water, a lot of times we were fishing like Elmdale one time, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, somebody came up and cut us off right in front of me. Well, actually, they cut off, I can't remember who was with me, Jason and maybe Nick, mm-hmm. and they cut them two off first, and then they got to me, and I heard them back there. Oh, he's fixing to cut Dwayne off. <laughs> he's fixing to get it now. <laughs> so yeah, I deal with it a lot like you do. Yeah. I mean it's just communication. If you if they just say something, it'd be all right. But when they don't, you know, then you have to say something. Right. Yeah, I just I just wish people would be a little bit more courteous. But then let me ask you this. Do you Jason, do you think it has anything to do with the fact that we're in a kayak and we're not in a bass boat? I don't know. I, I think that spot everybody feels like they own, you know, that is a community hole. Right. And a lot of people feel like they own it, you know, when the tables are turned. But it hasn't just been there. I've had it happen to me on Beaver. Yeah. yeah. It, it it does happen. It, there must be something to the, the bass boat. You know, hey, I've got a, you know, a really expensive rig here. I deserve to be out there. What is this guy doing? Kayakers shouldn't be out there because, heck, we can't even see him. And, you know, I've heard a lot of complaints from boaters that just do not like kayakers. But I don't – It to me, it's – the only difference is a finance or an activity – it's like, do you want to play? Do you want to play baseball or do you want to play softball? And another thing, I've been behind people in a kayak, and they'll cut off somebody that's fishing on the bank, and I'm like, yeah. how, how, <laughs> how are we supposed to? How are we supposed right. to get respect if you're not respecting people that are, you know, that are bank fishing, that are bank fishing or whatever? I fished on the bank a lot, you know, before I got a kayak, right. you know, and people would come up to you and cut you off. And it's like, man, you guys have the whole lake. You know, I'm sitting here on the bank. This is my only place <laughs> I can fish. Yeah. But I have a, a really heightened sense of, of, of awareness that those people are on the bank and I go way around. Yeah, absolutely. Them. I give them all the room I can. Yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I just don't really see the difference. And, and to me, you're, you're a person on the water. I don't care what you're floating in. Exactly. <laughs> Kayak lives matter. Kayak <laughs> lives. <laughs> that's our new, that's our new hashtag. But I, I I don't know if people are just doing it because that because they say they spend more money so they deserve something or another spot off of off of whatever. So yeah, I don't I don't see I don't I don't see why anybody should should 
do what they've done as far as like row right up on you. So that's just that's just terrible. I've had um, this one. We were going to the spot. Me and my son, he's four, he's thirteen at the time. We were going to this spot, and we had a bass boat haul, but right around us, get right in front of us. We were almost to the spot. They they shut shut down right in front of us, and then started casting towards my son. I mean, really? Come on, guys. You know? Yeah. So rude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, some of it is towards kayakers, but I come from the bass boat world, world of it at first, and it's bad over there, too. I mean, people would just cut you off in a bass boat. Mm-hmm. They didn't care. Yeah. And what do you think the uh, the folks with the Torquedo is going to do? You think the Torquedo guys are going to cut you off? I, I was actually cut off by a guy in a Torquedo with, or with a Torquedo fishing a bank. I was cut off by a PDL. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come zooming up beside me, went in front of me, and just stopped. You know, and I was working that bank. You know, how far was that? A tur- was that a tournament? National championship? Mm. Really? <laughs> yeah, yep. That's disrespectful. That's messed up. Yeah. If it's beyond a cast, one cast is rude. <laughs> Two casts, that is it's iffy. Right there. Right. But you know what I'm saying. Two. Yeah, I wouldn't mind working. If you it's know. two casts and you cut me off, you know, I'm going to be perturbed, but I'm not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. But any closer than that, that's just not right. Right. All right. So let's bring up the incident. The time that you got turned over. <laughs> turned over? <laughs> I mean, I would, like flipped. a pancake? Was <laughs> like it it just, it, someone did just take a spatula. A they call it, um, not turtled, but... Uh, I was ejected. Yep, I'm flying through the air. This is not good. <laughs> There's nothing turned over about <laughs> this. didn't turn over. Oh, you were just thrown No, out, I was right? gone. Oh, okay, oh. so... Yeah, no, we, um, I was pre-fishing uh, for uh, the Hobie. Uh, is it the BOS? Bass Open Series. Yeah, Bass so the, Open yeah, series, the yeah. Bass Open Series. And uh, the spot I picked um, from the launch, it's about a mile across to the coves that I wanted to fish in. And that morning it was a little windy, but it was okay to try to kind of get across and 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 do that. Um, but by the afternoon, when it was time to come back, it was like three to four foot swells. It was crazy. Um, and so I was trying to get back across to the launch and I've got these rollers just hitting me and I'm in a, um, 2019 Hobie Outback. Amazing, amazing kayak. I love this thing, but I had to use my paddle to stabilize myself no matter how much paddling I was doing. And unfortunately the waves were, were running the wrong direction. I had to go perpendicular to these waves and so I decided to, well, I'll kind of go at an angle because I wasn't able to go directly at them or else I'm ending up in Missouri, right? So the only way to get back to shore is I have to go at an angle to try to get back to shore. And I knew I was going to miss the launch, but at least I could get to the other side and then just skirmish my way up along the shoreline. So that was my plan. And then I just heard <laughs> this motor and I just knew this was not going to be good. And for those who don't kayak or who do, you know that, you know, when you're on the water, there's really only a foot of material that's above the water, your vessel. Now, when you got three to four foot swells, there's no material that anybody can see. So I really don't think this guy saw me at all. And he ran by me at full bore, probably about 15 yards away from me, perpendicular (laughs) to me. That's close. And I didn't have a, it wasn't like a a slow motion rollover and oh, I'm in the water. No, I saw him out of my peripheral one second. The next second, I see the bottom of my boat. I'm in the water. Now, you know, I don't know how to swim. And I actually got into kayaking to get over my fear of the water. I'm like, hey, I'll get, you know, I'll get a kayak and learn how to get over my fear, take a couple self-rescues. And I did that on a nice creek self-rescue. 
<laughs> I'm in 60 feet of water right now trying to figure out how to stay above the water with these these waves hitting me. So it was pretty bad. It was pretty scary. I just The thing I kept telling myself was just don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Flip the boat, flip the boat, flip the boat. And because these uh, Hobies have that Mirage Drive sticking out, I just grabbed the Mirage Drive and just flipped the whole thing, and it came over just like that. Um, the downside is is that when you kind of go overboard with rigging your your kayak, you don't really give yourself a spot to get back in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, Oh man. I, I, I tried to get back in the boat and I couldn't, I couldn't get back in no matter. I tried the front. I couldn't get back cause it would almost tip over. If I tried the side, it would automatically flip back over. I went to the back of the boat, tried using the handle and pushing down and getting back over. But my vest would get caught on, uh, on the handle. And so it, it wouldn't let me back in. So I ended up treading water for 45 minutes, holding onto the back of the handle at my chin. And these waves would just hit me in the back. And then all of a sudden I heard the motor. That guy comes right back. <laughs> zipping back by the other way. And that flipped the boat over again. What? And so I had to flip it back over. And when I tried to get back into the boat from the back, I'd taken my safety flag off and I put it in the boat and try to get back in the boat from that. And then once I realized I'm not getting in this boat, I put the flag back on the mount that was on the, the mount that's on the back. And it turns out that that's the only reason why somebody saw me. So I was treading water for about 45 minutes. Turns out that uh, there was a, a wedding photography thing going on on shore and somebody saw the flag. They didn't, they said they didn't see me or the boat. And if anyone's seen my boat, it's like bright, bright green, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? You can see a mile away, but these swells were so big, just nobody, nobody saw me. They saw the flag and I guess they waved somebody down and came over. <laughs> the funny part about this, even though I was scared to death, I thought I was going to drop dead. Uh, they came up and the photographer was in the boat <laughs> and he's got his camera and he's shooting me what? with his camera. <laughs> and I holler out, put down the damn camera and get me out of the water. <laughs> what the sh- <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. EMTs came out. They said my heart rate was like at 58. And it was, it was, I was like cold. on the verge of, say, what it, was was cold. Yeah, it was April 19th and it was still cold. The water was oh. really, really cold. It was like, they said it was on the verge of hypothermia. Fifties or sixties. Yeah. I remember because, because I went out a couple days before and then you, I actually called you Yeah, while I was underwater. Mm-hmm. My phone made it. My, my, my phone made, could tolerate the water. And <laughs> the only number that I could do was <laughs> call CeeLo. <laughs> yeah. So I'm at work and all of a sudden I uh, get a call and I'm like, Hey, what's up, man? He's like, man, I flipped over. I can't get my car over. Help me. And then, um, I, I don't, I, I guess from being wet, like we were trying to talk and all of a sudden buttons are going beep, 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 beep. And then I'm like, what's going on, man? And I was freaking out. And then, so I called the, uh, police department right because I, they were like call this person call this person call this person and then they're like he needs to call they're like no uh because i called the police department yeah so the emergency services told you that i needed to ring yeah. them instead yeah they're like <laughs> they go i go hey uh, my buddy's on the leg he's at and i told them where you were at right and um they're like well, he technically needs to call us. I'm like, he's flipped over. Like, how is he going to, hey, guys, uh, just let you know, I'm stuck out here on the lake, flipped over. And No, it wasn't like that at all, man. It was scary. I was afraid I was going to get hit by another boat because mm-hmm. you couldn't see me. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. So I was, like, calling the police department. They told me to call uh, fire and uh, rescue. rescue on the lake. So then I called them, and they're like, well, he needs to call us. And I'm like, how's he going to do that? Please explain to me. And then, and then I was like, okay. So they're like, all right, well, bye. And I'm like, okay, well then I called you back. And at that time, like you, you can, you didn't have your phone. So I'm like sitting there calling back, calling back. And then I finally get a hold of you. And then they, it turns out that they went ahead and sent somebody anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, they did. They did. They sent out some folks, but I'll be honest with you. Uh, the only thing I, th- I thought about two things while I was out there uh, is, is I thought about Rebecca, <laughs> which was, you know, nerve wracking for me. And then I also thought about that. I had read that previous week that already five people have, have passed on beaver this year. 
And I'm like, oh, I'm number six. Because my arms, I couldn't hold, it was hard to hold on. My arms were so sore, they were spasming. My forearms were just trying to hold on in the back of that kayak. I believe it. So it kind of leads into that whole thing about, you know, boat safety. And mm -hmm. they, I've heard the phrase that, you know, uh, dress to swim and rig to flip for, for kayak fishing. So... I mean, yeah. everything. I, of course, I lost eighteen hundred dollars worth of fishing gear. Yeah, and it's sitting at the bottom of the lake right now. So that was no fun. Hundred feet? No, sixty. Oh, sixty. Yeah, that was 60. It was sixty feet. I called a diving company to see if they would come out, but they said where that's at, sixty, you're not going to see anything at that depth. Oh, really? Yeah, they said you it's won't. Just it's black. It's just black. You won't see anything. They said best thing you could do is take some chains and drag it across, and maybe you'll catch something. They snag your. Uh Snag something. Snag your rod and break it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I want to. I want to. I wanted to ask you guys about the national championship, kayak national championship. Jason, you've been. How many times you've been? I've been to every one of them. Uh, it started in 2016, and I right. qualified and fished every one of them. In uh, Dwayne, I've been to two. You've I've been qualified for since I've been kayak fishing 18 nine. Or 17, 18, and 19, but I didn't fish until 18 and 19. Right. So what do you guys, how do you compare the national championship tournaments to the state and regional tournaments that we have? I don't think there's any comparison. I mean, it's absolutely huge. You have everybody from all over the country um, on one lake or, well, two, you know, Kentucky Lake and Beaver, or uh, Barkley. Right. And it was just absolutely huge. The largest one was like 780-something anglers, which is, that's wow. a big tournament. Right. You know, and it's a multiple-day event. So if you don't do well on that first day, you know, it's going to be tough to make it up, you know, the second day. Because isn't it like a qualification rounds that you have to be in like the top 100 to move on to the next day or something like that? The new one... Uh, the new format for this year was really good because they had two days, and then what, was the cut the first day? No, the two, cut was the second. Two day. full days after the on the last day there was only a hundred. Yeah, so they cut it to a hundred. They gave those anglers a, uh, a special sticker for their boat so you can recognize them on the water because the big bass was still going on. So you can still go out there and fish even if you're cut. So you could still go out there and fish because you, you were fishing for big bass, even okay. if you didn't make the cut. Right. But those stickers indicated those people made the cut and kind of leave them alone, you know, give them some space. Okay. And a lot of us just went to a totally different place. And I went to the Red River. I, I, I knew where Dwayne was going. I was like, okay, good luck, dude. And I went to the Red River. And I wished I would have went to the Red River the first day because I found great fish. I mean, I had an excellent third day. In Tennessee? Really you're talking matter. about Red River in Tennessee? No, the Red River in, um, in Shreveport. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you're talking about last year. Uh, this year. This, this, was, I'm this sorry. was this March. Yeah. I, yeah I, but the 2019. Right, right. Okay. So tell us, what's your association with KB? You're like regional director? Regional uh, director, yeah, or coordinator is what they're calling it now. But uh, I helped with the Southeast, coordinated uh, what, five events and the uh, championship on Wheeler. Right. So we had some of the best uh, big bass lakes of any of them. I mean, we had um, uh, Gunnersville, Chickamauga. Um, where Lanier's coming up. We just had Kentucky Lake last week where uh, Josh Stewart was on a podcast or something, some kind of live show, and he was calling out he was going to get 100 inches, and he had 99. He, he almost <laughs> did it. Oh, he wow. He did really good. Nice. And uh, so, I mean, he knows that Kentucky Lake very well and has always done well at Kentucky Lake, so good for him. We've got a Fish It Forward coming up. Yeah, we did this weekend. Yeah. This weekend, another night tournament. It's 4 to midnight. Tell the listeners about the Fish It Forward organization and what, oh, what is Fish It Forward was an idea that we had. We we're we we're trying to think of a way to uh, not just do the same thing that's always been done. So we came up with a nonprofit organization where instead of we're, 
you know, collecting and stuff from sponsors and stuff like that. We actually collect uh, rod and reels and, and things like that from anglers who has that stuff sitting in their garage that they're not necessarily using. What we do is repurpose that and give it away to kids in need who want to learn how to fish. So, I mean, we've given away so many rods and reels. I, I can't even keep Man, up. Man, we got some stuff in this. And here in the Bear Cave, we could probably donate to the, yeah, sh- to the yeah. organization. We should do uh, that. Go out there and pick out some stuff. Yeah, the Cub Scouts have been um, really receptive of it. Uh, church organizations. Uh, Ryan Paskowitz, who we fish with, uh, set up a, a fishing derby for the, the kids in, in Bentonville Lake. Right. And we fished for um, catfish. And Dwayne and I got to go out there, and it was a blast. <laughs> that was awesome. Kids. We had That's a good cool. time. We, um, so three of us have qualified Dwayne, Jason, myself, we're all going to the national championship. Ah, what in Marcello the world? Is, is, <laughs> Marcelo has, has got, no, no, no. You've got your bucket list yeah. of catching every fish on the planet in Pretty this much. part of the United States. Yep. So you're working on that task. Yeah. So how, how are you coming along with that? So good. Um, so the idea was actually something that I've like thought of, but I didn't know how I was going to initiate it. That's, that was the thing. It's like, how am I going to do this? Like, I want to just go and try just catching fish, different kinds. And um, I flew to North Carolina, uh, Fayetteville, and it was during the hurricane And so that was tough because we lost electricity and everything like that. Right. And so the first couple of days was good. Um, And my brother-in-law was like, hey, there's a little place down so-and-so. You just go drive. And I Google mapped it. And of course, I went there and I hooked into something that broke 65-pound braid like nothing. Like it was just like boop hit like you ever, like whenever you feel a fish hit and then all of a sudden you feel the tug right i felt that in the tug and then it was gone and i reeled it up and my lines kind of flapping around now so i'm like okay um that was weird so uh i started i retied on started fishing and i ended up catching a a pickerel and i was like this is awesome i've never caught this fish and so uh, I, I let it go, and then um, when I went back to their house, uh, her, my brother-in-law was like, well, did you catch anything? I was like, yeah, and uh, so I showed him a picture, and he's like, that is awesome, and then I kind of slowly started thinking about it, and I was like, man, wouldn't it be awesome to get a picture of the United States, and then for each state, like, everyone takes fish pictures, you know, so each state cut out the fish or cut out the the picture in the shape of the state and stick it on there and so that's going to be my like completed completed and so you can see exactly on the map where i've caught those fish you know like in like in florida for example i have a fish i have a lady fish that i caught and i thought that was the coolest thing ever so i am put like a lady fish with a picture of the lady fish and me holding it on florida until i complete all in the United States. That's cool. So that's really like cool. A, the fish brain app. Have yeah. Seen that I've app? seen that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I like it. Yeah. So basically kind of like that. Mm-hmm. So that's a good idea. You're tying this into your real story. Yeah. So I'm tying it into the channel to the real story. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I was actually thinking about making the video pretty soon. Um, so believe it or not. Okay. So the real story tomorrow or wait, what's today? Today is the, the, the 23rd. 23rd. So Friday is going to be the one year anniversary that I started the clothing line. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was I was looking at my calendar whenever we went to, you asked what, what the temperature was. Right. And yeah, so that was like Friday. And I was like, whoa. It's already been a year. Yeah. That moved so fast. Yeah. It's crazy. Time this year is going by quick. It is. So yeah, pretty excited. Are you going to do anything anniversary for it or are you going to make a new design or? Um, yeah, I think because I had a design with Arkansas and the bass uh-huh. and it had the real story underneath it. And so I think I'm going to do like a limited time special buy for the real story and bring that back. And I'll do that like every year or something. Where do folks get these shirts at? So it's actually at trsoutfitters.com. Is that all one word? Yep. All oh, one trsoutfitters.com. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So uh, TRS Outfitters. So T stands for the... Our yeah. real yeah. S story. And then the Outfitters is we're outfitting people with, with clothing gear to get out there and fish. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, 
Now, did, did you did you go to ICAST this year, Dwayne? No. No. Never been there, but what did you guys see online or anything that you thought was pretty cool? <laughs> the Hobie 360. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's that was right. Being able to spin in a cove. So the second you guys started talking about it afterwards, I went and looked it up and I was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> so currently I have a Jackson Cuda 12 that was like, my first kayak purchase it was like 1300 when they're i mean it was like for right. like the pdls and everything started taking off yeah and um i remember just being like this is the coolest thing ever and then i saw somebody with the pdl like Zew! and i was like that's the coolest thing ever now and then now the 360 i'm like all right so that, that's a bucket list yeah item it's like that, how that we have i'm to i have for. to work uh, i'm working like that's that is the goal so you know what i was goal. thinking is like is like flipping kayaks online to get to where you could just go right. get that. You know what I mean? So right. like, like go online and, and buy it in, you know, Facebook marketplace and maybe buy one and then, you know, flip it for a couple extra hundred dollars, get another one, then flip that one for a couple extra hundred dollars. <laughs> the kayak flipping. flipping it. Yeah. So buy, buy a, buy a kayak and you flip the kayak, but you like add accessories. You're like, no, I've seen people do that though. I've seen people just flip stuff to hey. get to the point to where they're or barter up or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Boom. Mark it up. There we go. But what about adding a torpedo to that Jackson? Okay, so that would be awesome. But then I then I that's half the price of the Hobie three hundred and sixty. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. See, I'm all for that. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about this torpedo. So I've just a, seen them. Okay, so I I haven't even actually used mm -hmm. one yet. But um, Jeff Little from Torquedo came came down the other day, and uh, just sold me on on this whole idea. And, and at national championship, we we saw these guys get out there, and we're in our hobies, and they're going through this grass. Like you know, for us, we'd hit that grass, and it would kind of stop us. And we're trying to muscle through it, had to pick up the drive and clean it off and stuff. These guys in the Torquedo were just gone. I mean, right, they were gone, and I think everybody in the top, just about in the top ten, had a torpedo. Dwayne did not. Negative. He was ninth place, by the way. No, but he was ninth in That's the country. And he awesome. Good Dwayne's job. Dwayne's the big stick in the group no, here. Yeah. yeah, but the torpedo played a big role in that, yeah. and I think it's going to play a big role when we go to um, Wisconsin. You, you you have one on order or. Yeah, mine shipped yesterday. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. So when it comes in, I'm let's just put it on my kayak. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we come out here and install it out here? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. And put it in the water. <laughs> now, when you have that and the 360, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. Oh, my the, God. The this is insane. HDS this is, yeah. And the forward-facing sonar mm -hmm. is kind of next on my list. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, is that Lawrence? Lawrence, yeah. You haven't seen it yet? I just did Genesis, and I'm so psyched about that. I haven't put oh, it like on in a, person. I don't think anybody's put it on a on a kayak yet. Yeah. Oh. See, that's next and level how stuff. How would you do that? I mean, I don't even think the... Um, oh, the hillbillies will rig it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'm not sure we can figure this out. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but I want to oh. be the first to get that on there and see what it, it looks like. That's going to be cool. Yeah. Take it to our spot, you know, yeah. and actually see our lure. Oh you know, man, with the fish reacting to it, I think right. it'll be awesome. But that uh, that Genesis Live on the Lawrence, I mean, for those out there who have not updated your, if you have a Lawrence uh, fish finder, you definitely need to try this. So for those small lakes where there where Navionics or you know your you know whatever software charting system you're using doesn't chart it very well, this this thing charts it amazing it's made a huge difference in my tournaments of me finding the fish and the ledges and and whatnot in, in lakes that navionics doesn't give you that information so you know what the trick is that people don't notice what? Or, or realize that they had to put a blank sd card in there to make genesis live work right so you have to take you do have to take your navionics out so what i do is i just take my navionics chip out and i throw it in in my uh my waterproof box with my uh with my fishing license and so if i ever n d need to change it out then i just go back and grab it and put it in there so but i did not know that yeah yeah you have to remove that mm -hmm. So are you running Lawrence? No. Uh no, I have Gray Marine, but Ray Marine. but my oh, okay. my display's at home. All right, at work. 
Right, right. So, because because we were trying to look that up earlier today. Yeah, we were trying to pull up the Genesis Live on the on the ones at the shop, but they didn't. Right, couldn't they pull won't it up. work without the the SD card. Right, right, right. right, so right. I had to go grab the card out, and, or the uh, catalog out, mm. and, and show people and things like that. Okay. So um, I'm pretty excited about. Um, in two weeks, we have a big, big tournament that Dwayne and I both are going to, and it's the uh, FLW Cup. Yeah, so this is where FLW signed up with uh, KBF. This is the first year for that. Yeah, yeah. They have first partnered, partnered with up. Uh, KBF, and uh, this is a big deal. This is, is going to be pretty cool at Lake Washita and Hot Springs. It's uh, going on the ninth and the tenth, and it's going on concurrently with the FLW Cup for the bass boat guys. And they're going to be on a different lake. They're going to be oh, on good. Lake Hamilton. Okay. And we're going to be on Lake Washita, which Lake Washita is absolutely huge. You ever been to Lake I've Washita? I've not. I've not. It's the largest lake in Arkansas. Really? Ah. Absolutely beautiful. I think I think that this is very, this is a wonderful thing for the kayak fishing community to have that type of a of organization partnered with, uh, with KBF because that's going to help us get, you know, get some momentum and, and grow the community even more. I mean, that's the main reason why I joined. I mean, I don't know what, why you guys joined, but to me, it's, it's, I did it for the camaraderie of having other people that share the same interest and, and, and yeah, there's some, uh, definitely some competition. Um, I I really hate fishing with Dwayne, but, um, It's, I don't know if anybody's ever fished with Dwayne, but um, it, he really makes you look like you have no idea what you're doing. You could be throwing the exact same bait. He'll yank in like 15 fish and you're like, where's my one? <laughs> or even if you are catching him, he'll catch a bigger one. <laughs> yes, he's done that every single but now time. Listen, now listen, when I started fishing with you, you hadn't even caught a 20. No, no and yes. now you what did. have you caught? Well, <laughs> yeah. Now I've, you're I've like, all oh, these stupid 100s. 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, I, st- I still got to keep going. I mean, so I got to be consistent in it. Right, right. right. But you're learning fast. But, yeah, so if if I can, like for this month, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be in first for the state. So if right. I can hold on to that 20 inch plus lead that I have and nobody is sandbagging and I qualify for Wisconsin, then I can lay low for the rest of the year and just get better at, at my, at my skill. I think fit, that Hobie fishing. Outback is going to be key in Wisconsin. You think so? I think, I think I would rather have a, an Outback out there because uh, which lake do you know? Well, it's on the um, Mississippi River, and there's all these backwaters oh, and all this that. grass. It's on the river? Like, well, you can find these backwaters, and I'm telling you what, it's <laughs> just chock full of grass. Right. And you get to the ramp, and it's like you're trying to get off the ramp. Okay. There's so much grass. I didn't know it was going to be on the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. So Mississippi go by Wisconsin? Oh, yeah, it's between Wisconsin and Minnesota. That's actually where it starts up there. No, it's, does it? It starts yep. up there, yeah. Man, I wish I'd done better in high school. <laughs> I went last year to uh, to an open, and I took my dad with me, and uh-huh. it was his first tournament. <laughs> and I put him in a, a yellow outback, you know, uh-huh. and I had a little ransom and stuff on there. And I didn't tell him how to uh, put the fish on the board and take the pictures oh, and right. I didn't explain that very well. He's sitting there with five fish in this thing, you know, going, what do I do with all these fish? And I'm like, <laughs> He, he just him kept him right after another. He's, like, <laughs> you know, he's a basketball guy. Like, it was where's the live well? <laughs> where's the live well on this thing? Man, that was oh, just goodness. an awesome experience. And uh, I saw him this weekend. He was just talking about that. He might be fishing with us this weekend. So if you guys come up and fish mm-hmm. the um, fish at Ford in Bella Vista. I really want to hear Dwayne's experience at the national championship yeah. and, and getting through 400 and something fisher all the way up to ninth. How in the world, well, other than just being Dwayne Beatty, I mean, how in the heck do you get to ninth? Well, out of fourth, I mean, what? I had a horrible practice. <laughs> we, we fished one place on Caddo, and it was pretty good. I caught a couple of fish in the 18-inch range or whatever, and so that first day was pretty good. And then we went two other places on Caddo. 
And then, I mean, my total fish catches during the three days of practice was maybe five fish and two of them were decent. So I definitely wasn't on them, but I, what I did do was figure out what I needed to be doing, <laughs> which is actually the point of practice, but I had no idea that I was actually going to do that well when it actually came time. So the first... On day one, I had figured out an area, but not a bait. So I started throwing a fluke in there because of the grass. I caught a limit really quick on the fluke. Um, cold up a couple times. And they, the sun came up and that stopped working. So I was like, eh, let's just go throw a chatterbait. Yeah. <laughs> so I took the chatterbait and the first one that hit the chatterbait was a 24 inch that weighed 10 pounds and 6 ounces so dang we, we put that up on the, on the screen <laughs> absolutely Wait, is that, that was the, the I think I remember seeing that and that was where again that was at Caddo okay yeah, yeah I, on I, Caddo. I remember seeing that that was yeah, just crazy but, yeah. yeah and there have been people around me all day and I catch yeah. this one there's nobody around to take my picture or anything I got a I got a selfie style picture, you know, yeah. propping the phone up. Oh, no. yeah. right. But I didn't have him lean. He's leaned back, so you can't tell how big he is. Mm. Very good. the The picture on the catch board looks awesome, though. Yeah. I mean, mm. he is so thick. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. That's crazy. So I caught that one, and then I caught a. I think I called two more times with the chatterbait that day and had ninety inches or nice. so, somewhere in that range. And then on day two. I'm just consistently going down instead of up. So on day two, I think I had 87 or something. I did have a 22-inch fish that I caught with the catch guys filming, mm -hmm. although it was raining, so they were just using GoPros at the time. But we got some pretty good footage of that one. And so it looked pretty good. Um, that 22 saved me on that day, or I would have really fallen and that was literally right before it was over. So that one saved everything on that day. So that put me in like 13th or something after two days. And then we cut to 100. And on the final day, I only caught 80 inches or 80 and 80.75, something like that. But wasn't it rain? Wasn't there a couple of days where it was just oh, yeah. raining crazy? Oh, yeah. It rained how many a lot. Full, how many days was the whole tournament? Three. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. So how long were the tournaments? How long time period? Did um, what did we start? It was about eight or nine hours. Yeah. Eight or nine hours a day. Yeah. That's a lot of fishing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lines in at what, five or six? 5.30? I think it was at six. That about six. It was I mean, dark. The time changed. It was definitely dark when we yeah, started. So dark. I think it was like six. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. And then we were, had to be done at three or so. When, when we go this time, we're, we're going to all GoPro. We're going to do what Greg did. Yeah. We're going to do what Greg did. And so we're all going to video camera our whole entire experience. Absolutely. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to have the catch, the catch team follow me around to film, you know, or my, the owner. Right. He has a um, person that films. And so on. That's what I was thinking me. about. Maybe having uh, Cello come down. We had Jamie... What's the dates? He's a direct guy. Do you know the what the dates, dates are? Of the tournament, this, the challenge, this coming up. Uh, 9th and 10th of August. No, 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 no. He's talking about the Winds of National Championship. Not, uh, that's um, April, April 2nd or 1st or 2nd, something like that. Yeah. So they were filming Jamie, um, Jamie Broad, who is a local, and he's on the catch team. They were filming him on day one. He lost a giant that was close to a double digit if not right and they got that on film and him slamming his stuff down and that was a really awesome moment but then, then they got word that i caught that one so they followed me on day two and three but and you yeah no and i did catch up. the 22 right but we did miss the big ones right that was unfortunate but i was just happy to get it i the last I've got two double digit fish and the first one I caught in 1994 fishing off the bank. So, <laughs> so that's almost like it didn't even count. It's been too long. This one made it to the TV show on the KBF TV yeah. show. Yeah. The, I noticed that they put mine on there 
And the guy that won Big Bass, which I wasn't in Big Bass. Right. And, <laughs> right. Now listen. I'm sorry. A guy caught a 25 and a half in the same wow. hour uh-huh. and won the whole thing, so I didn't miss anything. Elsie uh, the L- 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 is the name? or No. The... Who's that guy that, do you remember the guy that won Big remember. Bass? Who's the guy that won the tournament? What's his name? Isn't it? Mike Elsia. Mike so, Elsia. Elsia? Elsie. Elsie. Mike So Elsie. how long was yours? 24. Oh, so his is 25. Dang, I thought you were going to say that you could have had that Big Bass. No, and somebody no, got it. I got lucky. I was, I was lucky, like, what? whatever. Yeah. But yeah, if I'd have been in it, I wouldn't have got anything yeah. because that 25 and a half was caught in the same hour. Yeah. We talked about it too, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually going to do it. I decided, you know, to gamble that money, and I was going to do it that night. Yeah. And I went to do it, and it was too late. We we got to doing something, and then when we got done, it was after time, so I didn't make it yeah. in. We should we should uh, see about either uh, the Outback and have Marcelo come down. Why don't you get qualified? <laughs> so how many tournaments do you have to fish to get qualified? One. One. One you have to by be, KBF. You, yeah, have you have to, need to be a KBF member. I am. You are okay. Well, that's you're halfway there. So sign up for another tournament, which uh, this weekend is going to be a one night stand. You got 13 hours and go fish whatever lake. I would go to. I need you to shut the <laughs> up. And Friday night, and then Saturday night, come fish our fish it for tournament, or do both of them. But I'm totally going to bleep where you told him to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, I <laughs> no, I know that. I'm just saying. I'm gonna, yeah, bleep that uh, out. Are um, you are you a chatterbait guy? Uh, actually, I'm no. He's jig. I I yeah, throw a jig. Good. Yeah, dragging the bottom. Is he just fine? That chatterbait at night is amazing. Yeah. See, I know I need to get better at a chatterbait. I do, I, but I just can't put the jig down, man. I'm addicted. Do you throw it at so, night, mm-hmm. or do you even fish at night? Uh, no, I have. I've fished a couple of times that night. Yeah. It's that's all I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty it, awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to hear something crazy? We we're talking about iCast. We didn't really touch much on iCast at all. But uh, so Jason and I go uh, to our spot. Anyway, <laughs> we go. To, we go. To, we go to our spot. We go to our spot, and uh, he's already lined up in the best position. So I, I'm off to the side, right? So, uh, he ends up throwing is, was it a chatterbait or a jackhammer? I wasn't throwing them until you were. So you caught that one first. Right. And then I switched over. Right. I was like, why? But was it a jackhammer or it was a jackhammer? It was a jackhammer. Yeah. So a he's throwing one. <laughs> okay. Listen, no, no. Here, did, they this. Make, did they make anything else? <laughs> no. So he, right? he, he's, oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So he's throwing a jackhammer and he just, he's not doing anything with it. And I'm like, what are you doing? So he's dead sticking this jackhammer. He throws it and just leaves it down. All right. And listeners, I want you guys to try this. This is amazing what happened. So he's just sitting there. And then all of a sudden he just puts his kayak in reverse and starts backing up. And all he's doing is dragging it. And then every now and then taking in the slack. And he does this for like the 10, the 20, the 30 yard line. Bam. He's in there. And he and he just he he just totally and he ends up uh, just pulling in fish left and right. And I think I watched him catch like seven or eight fish doing this, just dragging this chatterbait on the ground and just slowly, just taking up the slack. That's really all he was doing. And then the funny part about it is I'm watching iCast, and Z Man comes out with a chatterbait that you drag. It's it's <laughs> it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a football head. Uh huh. Kind of like a wiggle football head, but it's a chatter bait. It's got a chatter on it, the blade on it, and and you're supposed to drag it. That's the presentation. And I'm like, Jason just did that. Jason, <laughs> listen, co-inventor here. <laughs> oh my god, I have something to talk about yeah. after that. The chatter bait, the jackhammer, the regular one. You'll catch a lot more fish if you fish it on the bottom instead of like a spinner bait. <laughs> if you, if to me, that's why I, would, I always kind of went ever since I started throwing the jackhammer, I always kind of considered it kind of like a cross between. A jig and a chatterbait to me. Just yeah. I mean, it needs to be moving, it, but I always keep contact with the bottom. Right. You know, pick it up, let it fall back down. Yeah. When I first started really getting into this, was like, a, I think I hadn't even bought my kayak yet. I was in Cabela's, bought some stuff out of the bargain cave, 
and they had these little spinners, just spinner blades, little mm-hmm. tiny blades, and I attached a little paper clip to it, straightened it out, and I would stick it in the back of a Z-Man. So when I throw that Ned rig, it has a little fluttering spinner on the back of it. <laughs> did you did you see that they came out with that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I posted that in 2016, around April, maybe. Right. And then they, they're like, look what we invented. And I was like... <laughs> what? I was like... <laughs> um, in the Bassmaster Classic in... 14 or 13 somebody was doing that yeah with the yeah with a full size oh, obviously man. though but a full size Cinco, Cinco and then you screw crap. it in yeah. with a hitchhiker so yeah, yeah that so they didn't steal your yeah thing. no i was like <laughs> i was like oh i'm so jealous right now but um yeah no i was i saw that because we we got them in the shop and i was just like i hate this but no that's it's a really good idea so right so speaking of icast did you guys see the lunker spider Topwater spider? No. Freaky looking thing. Dude. It? Oh, that big thing. The, yes. It's I a, saw it. It's a topwater by Lunker Hunt, I believe. Yeah, it's like a frog. And it was a spider. It's a spider. <laughs> Dude, I, I have issues with spiders, man. I will burn a house down. I, I, you think I'm going to purposely <laughs> put a fake one in my boat? Listen, no. it, it looks so good. I have to have one. I like realistic looking baits, like right. the, the, the snake. snake. <laughs> like a snake. Yeah, oh, got a bunch of different. Like I got, I have a bat. I have a bat. <laughs> yeah. Have you caught anything on these crazy no, fish? On these crazy okay, I, No, I haven't. I okay. So I will catch something off the bat. I will. I have a good feeling I can catch something off of the bat because it's a big. It's like this big and <laughs> it's black and. Listen, we'll have to make a challenge video and we'll all get one crazy lure yeah. and somebody has to catch a fish. Off Absolutely, it. Oh, definitely should do in that. In twenty four <laughs> hours, you have to catch a fish with it. Yes, I'm in. I'm gonna throw the bat. You can throw whatever you throw. It doesn't matter. Oh, you know what Dwayne's we should do? Get the here's, here's, here's what we do. Here's what we, do. We'll, we can get the four baits, and then somebody else picks which bait you have to have. Well, we do it. We do it out of a hat. There we you get go. This bait. There we you get, go. We, we'll buy these baits, yeah. and because objectively, like, if I'm, you know what, I I will make you try to catch something off of the bat. You know, like kind of that no, kind of feeling. It. So. Oh, and I got it. The winner. Whoever catches the biggest fish gets to pick a hard bait out of the other person's rig. Oh, I mean, I'm okay with that. <laughs> sure, let's do it. I'm okay with that. That's something we should definitely do. Hobie has a thing on the bottom of it called the Hobie Guardian, and it's made for the large transducers. And what it does is it mounts it perfectly, but whenever you're not, um, uh, say you're transporting your boat or you're going through shallow water, you can use the pull cord, and it retracts up into the uh, the hull of the boat. And when you get out there in the water, you drop it down. It's not that it's not going to work if it's up already, but when you drop it down, that side scan is just phenomenal. It is unbelievable. Dwayne and I will go out to uh, um, some of our favorite spots, and we'll target fish using our side scan. And we'll, we'll point to them. They're right here, you know, and we'd actually point to those fish, cast at them, and catch them. Right. Yeah. I, I like the f- uh, the one— the part I like about the Guardian is that it, it pushes back up. It's got that it's got that guard at the front of it that if you rub against a log or something like that, it'll just push it back up there and not it's you know spring not loaded. right spring loaded, so it won't it won't uh, mess up. So I I just think that um, you know that that's a, a perfect partnership you know with those two men in my opinion top of the line uh, boat kayak and uh, electronics. Right. One of the things I like, um, you know, you guys got me into uh, night fishing and I have to tell the listeners, anybody, if you need to go check out yaklights.com, those guys have some of the best lighting systems and solutions for rigging your boat for, for night. The other thing is, is I've also on both of my, um, my kayaks, I put the, uh, lights on the very back, like brake lights. And that's actually saved me a few times traveling down the road is when somebody gets too close to me, I can hit the remote because these are wireless and you can wirelessly turn on your lights if someone gets a little too close when you're pulling your boat. But the other thing is not only are they great for fishing at night and, and finding, you know, 
figuring out where your shoreline is at or figuring out where the, the bait fish are at, but also for safety purposes of other boaters knowing that, hey, there's somebody right there. So maybe, you know, if someone's not paying attention on a boat, you definitely want to make sure safety is your number one priority. And Yak Lights is probably one of the best partnerships that I, that we have that that uh, I think you guys need to go check them out and uh, see what they got that might fit your uh, fit your needs for your fishing expeditions. So check them out. Have you guys seen the lawnmower video? Yeah, the absolutely. Video is my favorite. <laughs> tell us <laughs> your tell. Please, real quickly, let oh, us yeah. know this the thing behind the lawnmower video. All right. So I'm cutting the grass and. I, uh, I'm just, you know, cutting the grass and then I kind of coast down, down the hill a little bit. Cause I have a little hill in my front yard, coast down the hill a little bit and I go back up it. And then I have this thought in my head, what would it look like if I was trying to cut this grass so I could get permission to go fishing, right? So get your, get your, uh, your list done. Your yeah. So get list. Your, your honeydew list, done. your honeydew list done. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, it would look like this. And so <laughs> I, I start drifting in the front yard. I put the lawnmower right. as fast as it can go, and I start drifting in the front yard. Well, my sister-in-law walks out, and uh, my brother walks out, and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, this is what it would look like if I needed to get chores done so I could go fishing. And my brother lost it, started laughing. So I thought it'd be a great idea to in the spur of the moment to just go ahead and record it. Right. So I have a picture and I haven't posted this yet, but I will, um, where, because I'm, I'm, me, it's all visual. Like as soon as I have an idea, I start thinking, how would I record this? How could I do this? How could I do that? So I had him grab, 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 grab a camera and jump on my back. Right. So he's holding onto my back like this recording overhead my hands on the steering wheel so you get that that right. view and then then it was just from there it was just magic it just happened that's that hilarious that's yeah. cool anyway i want to thank everybody for uh tuning in to the hillbilly green show uh we are going to be trying to um we'll get a schedule together here pretty soon we've got you know with the four of us um in this group it's uh it's it's going to be difficult but we'll try to get some uh scheduled uh shows put together for the listeners and so that you know they can tune in on a regular basis and check out all the new content that we got make sure you check out uh the real story on youtube and instagram he's got yes, some amazing thank you. stuff Dwayne, what's the name of your youtube channel um Dwayne betty kayak fishing all one word Mm. <laughs> we'll have to edit that in. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because you you have some videos of you painting uh, some of your square bills, your hard baits, and I don't know if you're singing or dancing or talking to yourself or what, but it's hilarious watching you paint these but the precision that you do and the speed that you do did you speed up the camera or editing um, or there's some that are sped up on purpose they're obvious that one i don't think it's faster i think it's just you're you're pretty yeah, you've been, yeah you've been doing it for beats a minute to, beats per minute i think is how it is <laughs> measured you know okay. by the techno music right. that was playing in there <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should actually take those videos and edit them and put some beat music to the or something, <laughs> some type of music to the back of those. Anyway, thanks everybody for uh, tuning into Hillbilly Green Show. We'll see you next time. Thank Bye. you.